I'm now going to come back to the light box that we created earlier. This is for a record company called Quadrant Recordings and I'm going to show you how to actually machine this and we're also going to create an inlay for the light box. So what I'm going to do first of all is to import an image into the bitmap layer. So I'll right click and select import and I'm going to select here which is the Quadrant logo and I'll open that and it will open up quite large. I'm going to do bitmap to vector. Make sure my default layer is selected and I'm going to reduce the colours. I can also reduce the colours here. We have an icon there or I could right click here and it will allow me to reduce the colours. I'll just move this down to two colours so it's black and white. I'll change the speckle size to five and I'll create the vectors. I'll just turn off the visibility of the bitmap layers. There we have the Quadrant Recordings logo. I'm just going to make this visible just for the time being, just so I can see it. Select all of the vectors and I'm going to transform these vectors and I'm just going to change the width and the height of these. I'll unlink this so it's not in perspective and I'm going to change them to a specific size which is 250 by 150 and then apply that and just close this. I'll turn the other layers back on now just select the light bulb. As you can see at the moment we're going to be cutting this out from the back because we have the fold lines here so that's going to be the back at the moment this quadrant recordings, if we were to cut that out like so, it would actually be the wrong way around when we turn the light box over. So what we need to do is to mirror this quadrant recordings logo. So I won't copy the original vectors and I'll just do it horizontal center. So that's just mirrored that through the center. So there we have the Quadrant Recordings light box ready to machine now. So I'm going to select toolpaths and I'm going to do a 2D profile toolpath. I'm not going to select any vectors with this. As I said before, because I've got the vector pack installed, I can use the vector layers to choose what I want to cut. So instead of selecting vectors, I'm going to come down to grooves. And the finish depth is going to be 2mm and the material thickness is 3mm so this just creates a groove so it can be folded as this is going to be made from die bond. So I'll select the profiling tool and I'm going to select 3mm ball nose. I'm going to use aluminium, go to ball nose, select that and I need to also make sure that I am selecting along as the profile because I want to go along these grooves. So I'll click create now now you can see it's created a toolpath along these grooves. So I'll just close that now, open up my toolpath tree, and now I'm going to create an inlay toolpath. So I'm going to select inlay, I'm going to create a female hole, so I'll select that there. Instead of selecting vectors, I'm going to use the default layer, which is where my Quadrant Recordings logo is. And the finish depth, this is going to be 3mm, so it cuts pieces out. The tool, I'll select a 1mm, mm for this. This is because I don't want to have any large rads in the corners. And I'll select that. I'm not going to include any allowance on this. I'm going to do this in the next part when I create the insert. So this is just going to be cut out to size. So I'll just click calculate now and there you can see it's created the toolpaths for that. With the recordings cut out on the G, on the B, O and the E they all have small inside islands. What will happen here is that these will be cut out and they will probably fly out of the machine unless they are held down properly. This is one good reason to have the advanced profiling module upgrade because if I click the female inlay, the 1mm mm, I can select here which is profile options and you can create bridges with this. I'll create a bridge length of 3 and 
average thickness of 0.5 what this does it creates a tab between each part and this will allow it to stay within the material and then you can just break it out afterwards and just trim up the edge this will save you having to create separate parts for these particular pieces so I'll just click one bridge and select create bridges if I just zoom in here on the R as you can see here's a bridge and what I can do is just click on it and just drag that round I'll just drag this round to here I can also just drag these round what I'm going to do is just drag that round so it creates a bridge between the loose piece of the E and I'll just move this round here I'll move the C round to this edge here it's best to have these bridges on straight faces this is just so you can clean it up easier afterwards as you can't get in there to file off the pieces afterwards it's best to do it on a straight edge so I'll just move these round and as you can see here on the G I have a bridge there but because I've just selected one on each entity and I need two just to keep the two bits in the material so I'll just double click here and that will create a new bridge there so I'll just leave that like so and I'll just close that and that's created bridges for me just to keep the parts of this logo in the material so I'll just minimize that now I'm going to drill the holes out for the rivets so I'll click toolpaths and select create drilling toolpath and I'll just move this over to here instead of selective vectors I'm going to go on to the holes layer and the finish depth is right the way through the material so it's 3mm select the tool it's going to be a 3mm mm as these are 3mm diameter and I'll click calculate now that's created the toolpath to drill the holes finally I'm going to do a 2D profile on the outside just to cut the piece out so I'll select profile and selected vectors I want to use the light box so it uses that layer to cut out finish step for 3mm the profiling tool I'm just going to use the same 3mm mm. I'm going to change the step down on this to 3mm so it just cuts it straight the way out calculate now so I'll just right click here simulate all toolpaths and there you can see that's our light box ready to be cut out and then folded up so now I'm going to show you how to create the inlay for the light box so I'm going to go to file and open and I'm just going to open the image straight from the menu I'm not going to save the changes and this will open up the image straight into my bitmap layer set the origin as the center and I'm going to change the width of this to 500 mil as it's a little bit high at the moment and then just OK that go straight onto my bitmap selectors tool reduce the colors down to 2 and then OK that the speckle size needs to be the same as the previous one just so there's no inconsistencies and then create the vector and then close that turn off my bitmap and I'm going to transform these vectors so I need to unlink the width and the height and it's going to be 250mm by 150mm and then apply that so that's the right size now just zoom in a little bit here and now I'm going to offset the vectors this is just to allow some clearance just so the insert fits into the inlay within the light box so I'm going to go inwards by 0.1 mil, and I want to delete the original vectors so that's offset inwards by 0.1 so I have 0.1 clearance around all of the vectors so now I'm going to create a rectangle around this and the width of this is going to be 290 by 190 this is just so it fits within the light box and I'll accept that press F9 just to center it and then just zoom out a little bit 
Now I'm going to do some machining on this part. That's all that needs to be done as regards to the vectors. So I'll click toolpaths and this time I'm going to create an area clearance toolpath. I'll just move this over to here so it tabs with that. And I'm going to do it under selected vectors. Press Ctrl A just to select all the vectors. The finish depth, this is going to be 3mm deep and the material is actually going to be 5mm thick and I'll set the model position on top and the Z0 on top and I'm going to add some tools now I'll close my aluminium tools because this is going to be made from plastic and I'll open that drop down I'm going to use a 12mm mil with a step down of 3mm and I'm going to use a 3mm mil with a step down of 1.5 and I'm going to use a 1mm mil which needs to be the same as the inlay that I created previously and that's also going to be 1.5 step down click calculate now that's given me an area clearance if I just zoom in on the toolpath here you can see that's the 12mm cut there then it's doing a leftover cut for the 3mm and then it's just getting in the tiny gaps that the 3mm couldn't get in using the 1mm cutter so this is just to blast away a lot of material finally I'm just going to do a profile along the outside and I'm going to use the same 12mm mm for this and selected vectors finish step for 5mm which is the material thickness so I'll select my 12mm mm and this should cut right away through and there we have that there so that's the toolpaths complete for the insert so I'll just right click here and simulate all toolpaths and if I just zoom in here that's the roughing that's the 3mm then the 1mm and then the cut on the outside so there we have the insert ready to fit into our quadrant recordings light box finally I'm just going to show you how to actually save these toolpaths so you can send these to your machine so if I click here save toolpaths and here you can see I'll just move this one back over here that was the final toolpath here we have all the toolpaths that I've created and I can just select one or all of them and just move them over into here and then just select the machine that I have let's say I have Axis metric machine and then just click save let's just save them to the desktop just save it as one I can close that and if I just switch to the desktop and look here then you can see my NC code for that particular toolpath I can just do the same thing if I have a tool changer so I could just select say a few of the toolpaths I need to make sure that I change the tool number and it coincides with my machine and then just change multi-tool and then just save it in exactly the same way thanks for watching bye